All right, guys, today we are here with Prism God, Yosef, Raphael. You know him by a bunch of different names, depending on how you know him. Um, Raphael, just give yourself an introduction and tell people how you got into cards, what you like to collect, your favorite things, and other stuff like that. Uh, well, I am, to many people, I am Yosef on Insta, I'm sorry, on Facebook. My real name is Raphael. Uh, on Instagram, I go by Prism God. Um, but basically, I've been a collector for a long time. I mean, off and on for most of my life. Um, I got back in in 2017, 2016, 2017, like later years. Um, you know, basically, my friend's been begging me to get back into the space. My buddy, uh, Jesse, kind of brought me back in. Uh, plus, at the time, I really had not a whole lot of things going on. But and, and cards kind of just fell in my lap, so to speak. <laughs> That's when we first met, I think, when you first got back yep. in. Yep. That's exactly what I bought. To Jesse too. Yeah, I bought a I bought a case of I bought a case of prison basketball and I graded everything at that show that I met you at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. And then you ended up grading like two hundred Zions or something like that. No, maybe yeah, that more. was later on. Yeah, twenty nineteen yeah, yeah. uh, twenty nineteen, yeah. yeah. Yeah, later that was on. Crazy. Yeah, I I did well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a, uh, I think that was the first, one of the first shows was a Nashville show. Yep. Yep. I yep. Remember we, I, went all, we all went to that uh, hot dog spot. Remember hot that? Hot dogs. Yep. That was, that was the, I had fun back then, man. I was like, I didn't know anything <laughs> about anything. I, but I was like, that was probably the first time I realized I could make money in cards. I was like, I graded like 90 something cards at like $6 a piece or something like that back then. That was, RCR. Good old, good old days. Man. <laughs> That was a good old day. So six bucks of cards. And then, I mean, I wasn't even that long ago, hindsight, but it was a long time ago. But uh, $6 yeah. a card and it was crazy. I think I only had six or seven cards that didn't grade out. <laughs> yeah. Again, back in the old days where everything. But I mean, they probably made cards a little bit better back then than they do now. Yeah. Too, with all quality control. I didn't prep. I didn't prep them or anything. Like, I, I know. don't know. Wipe them and everything. Now I remember I told you, of... I was like. I was trying to get everybody to look at my cards. I was like, man, can somebody look at my cards, please? Because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I remember that was tight. That was, that was fun times. Now, yeah. I mean, you've grown tremendously since then. Um, yeah. Have one of the best shows in the country, in the world. Um, and it's coming up soon. Do you want to talk a little bit about Culture Collision and how you've kind of infused not only cards, but like sneakers and everything else that comes with your show? Yeah. Yeah. Um... I mean, I always tell people cultural is just really a big reflection of myself. As you can see by my room, I have a little bit of everything. I have toys up there. I got sneakers right there. I got Funkos right there. Whole wall wrapped around is really, even actually down here is actually sneakers bound down there under my desk. Uh, cases of those going around the room and then more jerseys around the room. So cultural is really just a big reflection of myself. Uh, of things that I like. And so that's why I always tell people all the time, like coach collision is really just for like-minded people like myself, you know, who, who likes different things. I mean, yeah, cards got me, you know, uh, I grew up loving cards, but then, you know, I couldn't afford cards when I was thinking about Jordan rookies back then, even at 2000 or 20, you know, 3000, $4,000 for a Jordan rookie card. Um, I just remember what PSA eights was probably like $1,800 at one point in time. Yep. And then I couldn't afford that, you know? So, I mean, sneakers was more affordable for me. So that was just my one collectible vice. <laughs> I still do it to this day. It's I like, like you said, I, I'm downsizing my, we're about to move uh, mm -hmm. just right nice. up the street. It's like 20 minutes away, but he needs a U-Haul just for his shoes. Wow. Like, we're going to move George your shoes. In the house. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Sorry, Tatum, you're not getting the house. <laughs> but um, how, how big is that? It, it, it's a huge space, and it seems yeah. like a lot of corporate is there now. Or I th I, I've i been to – I went last year because we had the freeze. And so when I went, I was – Wait, did I go to the first one? Did we go to no, the first one? Last no, we, year, yeah, last year was your first you time. Last year. Last year yeah, was you the first were going one. to the oh, one oh, where yeah, eBay was at, the basketball but tournament. yeah, froze. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it froze over the first year. The second year, we came through, and it. I, I was just not that I was surprised, but I was. It was way bigger than I thought, which was a good thing, I think. And when I came, I liked the basketball court at the end. 
Um, you had the uh, people talking about different companies on the far uh, right when you walk in. Yeah. And I got to meet a bunch of new people, especially from the East Coast that I don't usually deal with. So, um, and then there was a lot of corporate businesses there as well. Are they doing RCR or any any type of grading? Uh, unfortunately, we do not have. Uh, we only. Well, I ain't gonna say that. Unfortunately, but we don't have Beckett there, so there, there's nobody's doing RCR. Uh, we do have the support of CGC and SGC that'll be at the show. Uh, yeah. They'll be doing some special promotions for the show. So, okay. yeah. That's yeah, cool. one thing about your show that was super cool that, like, when we went last year, it was like most shows you go and it's like 99% cards and like 1% everything else. But at your mm-hmm. show, it was like there was people selling like jewelry and stuff they made. There was shoes. There was hats. There was, was like candle all shoes. Yeah, candles. There was all yeah, was types sick. of different things. So it was mm-hmm. like to absolutely bring in a bigger audience than just cards. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's important. I mean, especially from the collectible space, if we want to see uh, our space grow, we got to make it more open for other people to feel like they're invited to come out and be a part of it. I mean, you know, I think a lot of it is, I mean, for a long time, I felt like the car space has been like a, a club yeah. that only a few people were invited to. Cause even now, like, I mean, even, even back then, I think, you know, and I always tell Jerry and Terry, you know, rest in peace, Terry, that I was thankful for the fact that they made me feel like I was a part of what was going on. You know what I'm saying? I fought for that though. Cause I ain't gonna lie. Like I, I was trying to get back into the space and it was like, I was still an outsider looking in, but even when I saw him though, it was like, Oh yeah, he's part of the Atlanta crew. You can come sit with us. You know? So I, I was thankful for, for those situations. And I tell Jeremy, even now, like, man, like I'm thankful for those moments because I think that a lot of people that are new to the space, they're by themselves. They don't get a chance to talk to the sappies and they don't get a chance to talk to the Jerry's and the Terry's who have, you know, years of expertise, you know what I mean? So I think those things are very important. So, man. Yeah, I agree. As as someone who came up in this is as a kid, like Joe and like you and Terry, Jeremy, you guys all definitely like took me in and I'm very grateful and blessed for that. Yeah. I mean, it, it matters. So, I mean, so I say that to say like when we invite, we open the doors at culture collision for new collectors, potentially like we want them to come in with the things that they love that I love. Right. And then, you know, we can kind of have a conversation about why sneakers could be a collectible access, you know, be a a collectible portion as well. And why Funko pops and memorabilia could be very uh, collectible. And even pop pop culture stuff is, you know, see me, people see me posting about that all the time. So I think, that as we continue to grow as individuals, hopefully we can continue to grow uh, the hobby as well. So I think that's what your show does. It brings in a lot of people that wouldn't normally come to a, just a card show. Like you said, I feel like in our industry, it's kind of like, it's a little hard to come in because uh, like, if you just come to your show and you don't know what you're like anything about cards, it's not as uh, overwhelming. I don't think than you would in a normal card show. So people will be more inclined to come to culture collision, bring in like kicks. And like, I thought I bought uh, like three pair of shoes at that show Mm -hmm. and it was all under, all under stock X. People gave me good deals, but they started talking to me about cards. Mm -hmm. And I I wish, I wish there was like, cause I did meet you through Terry. Mm-hmm. And, and Jeremy, uh, but like, I, I wish like more people would not be as, I don't know how to say it, like overwhelmed or um, have anxiety or about it. Cause I, I'm, I know you're just like me, like tons of people refer to you to me as, because I know you as Ralph or, or Yosef, Ralph is what I always call you, but uh, Ralph, but um, they, they'd be like, oh, like people that like don't know that we know each other will refer to you as prism guide to mm-hmm. me. And that's a good, I think that's great though. I yeah. think that's a good thing. The way you marketed your name, the way that you put yourself out there. Um, you know, we do v- business very similarly. You grew, that's in my opinion, why you're able to grow this ginormous, like great show. And you, you know, you have everybody wanting to come with it. You're putting a basketball, you're working with, is it called overtime? Yeah. Overtime elite. Yep. Yeah, and you got a you got a full court with all the yeah exactly. You're mm-hmm. hooping this year, right? You're playing. No, no, I'm giving it. I'm letting everybody else enjoy it. I mean, I think as we continue to grow the charity basketball game, 
Um, I'll get into it at some point in time. It's just not right now. Not right now. I'm yeah. still producing it, so I'm trying yeah, to make yeah, it happen true. first. Yeah. I know. I know. Like last year, you were busy as heck. You were like sappy, da, 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 boom, 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 and you were hitting like so many different things. <clears throat> I don't even think I see saw like to to run a show. I don't think people understand how much you have to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the thing is, people don't really realize we've grown in a short period of time. I mean, our first show that we ever did almost was almost 400 tables. And we competed versus the Dallas show that same weekend. So, like, to put on a show, our very first show around 400 tables, to me, was a large success. I mean, we had almost 5,000 people that first show, you know. so That's crazy. That's awesome. And, like, and so, like, just to see where we've been in a short period of time, like, people don't realize this is this is going to be our fourth show. I and never. we're already, like, and, like, people were talking about it like it's a, you know, it's a national event, which I'm thankful for, but we do work really it, hard. I think it is. I think it's, it, I think it's one of the top shows in the world, honestly. I appreciate um, that. You didn't, did you go to that one in China? No, I was supposed, I was going to go, man, but it was the same weekend as my wife's birthday, so she. Oh, yeah, yeah, you were right, yeah. Happy yeah, she, wife, she, 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 wife, she, said, what's up too? she gave me she gave me permission to go but you know i was like it's a, <laughs> <laughs> it's a trap it's a trap it's a trap i'm gonna see if he's gonna take this bait and actually go do it but i heard it was nice i heard it was yeah, i would have liked good. to have gone um if if mary lou wasn't so pregnant and we didn't have a bunch of stuff going on i would have probably went because I heard it was nice and it would be nice to see that side of the world because they're what 90% basketball and then 10% everything else. Yep. And I, you know, that's what like you and I mostly deal in of our bigger stuff is basketball. Yeah, of course I mean, we do everything, but like we love basketball. So, of course. Yeah. It's in my heart. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think that, uh, I think people think that your show has been going on for like 10 years or longer <laughs> and right. you're like, no nah, man, this is the fourth one. Yeah. Now I will say this: we're doing two this year, and next year we plan on doing four. Um, I'm glad y'all are doing two. Yeah, so we're doing two this year, and and then next year we're doing four. And I think we're continually trying to, you know, we realize that uh, I ain't gonna say people need us in this space, but I feel like it's important that we we make ourselves um more aggressive, and okay. especially with our agenda on trying to bring in new collectors. And I think one time a year, you know, ideally that was my idea was doing like one one big show a year but i kind of like it was funny it takes me back to the conversation i had with bob means from ebay and i told him i was like man you know it's a shame that sponsors only support shows once a year at the national and he was yeah. like what do you mean i was like well people use ebay every day every day we only see you once a year yeah. that's not you know what i'm saying like you make million billions i'm sorry for the record they make billions of dollars yearly off of the collectible space, and we only see you once a year. That's a bad thing. I think yeah. it's important to be more personable, and you know, because like you don't have a face with any of these names, right? But with Sappy, right? Like people know Sappy. They know what you look like when you walk in a room. People know. You know, we right. say that people see me. They Prism God. Okay, why well, they know? But yep. it's more personable. But that's what makes that's what makes our who we are, right? uh important and it's and it, it makes it like i want to i want to see this person succeed because i know their story i know where they came from and right. i just remember like even when we first started and we met together in 2017 and i was like man like you was like you can grade your cars through me i'm like everybody terry's like okay yeah he's trusted he's good i'm like okay cool i'll try him and see what's happening and then to see where you came now to be able to go to opening up your own shop and i ain't gonna lie to you Somebody, I was I was actually talking to somebody yesterday about you, and I'm gonna say this: the Dallas Card Show success is mainly because of you. The reason why I more, say that is because too. you were you you were the one reason why I believe Terry and Jeremy came and they promoted me to come. And I think there was a lot of people. Now I'm not knocking, you know, I'm not knocking Kyle on anything no, that he's no, doing. No, no. But I will amazing. say that. I definitely will say that, you know, whether somebody else is going to say it or not, I'm going to say that the success of Dallas show, I think was built off of having the right people there and you were the right person that was there. And I think you helped bridge the gap for a lot of different vendors. So I don't know if that I makes mean, sense. Like, I feel what I'm like saying? That you're, you're an extension though of that. So it's <laughs> like me, I brought prism grad. Oh, prism God's going to be here. All everybody that deals with you is coming through. Yeah. So like all of us did it together and yeah. Kyle, he did have a good, like, 
he was super consistent with it all the time. I was like, let's keep building this. And then, it, you know, like you did in Atlanta and now your show's crazy. And so like, I would honestly, like Burbank's a good show. Uh, there's a bunch of good shows, um, but I think it's a really good I, uh, good idea for you to do. I told you that last year at the show. I was like, yeah. you only do this once? Like, because sometimes somebody can't, like, make that show. Like, we're about to have a baby, right? Mm-hmm. During that. And, uh, like, my team is going to try and get out there or will probably be out there. But I can't because my wife is about to have a baby and I can't leave her in a, like, leave her alone with all. Two ba- you know, we just had a baby, too, right? Like, yeah, a year I know. Ago. So she's 14 months. He's about to be here. And I'm like, peace, I got to go. I, I'm not going to be at the Dallas Card Show for most of it. Dang. Um, yeah. She, that he's coming on the 19th. Wow. So, but now I'm hearing you're doing another show. That makes me super happy because I knew you were thinking about it, but I didn't know until right now. And yeah. I think we promote the hell out of it through all of us and get everybody out there because I love the, is it in the same area? Yeah. We're not, we're not moving. We're not moving I anytime. Love, I so love that area. yeah, it's a great, it's a great area. I think, uh, you know, um, uh, that's the one thing I'll give credit to Charlie. That was my first partner for Culture Collision. Yeah, he actually yeah, he he was the initial guy that was like, "Man, let's let's do it over here." And I went over there to go look at him. Like, yeah, you're right. We should do it over here. This <laughs> makes a whole lot of sense. And um, it's nice. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, everything. Man, it's 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 so convenient. The uh, the hotel is really 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 nice. Uh, trade night there is really convenient. It's super big. Like you know. Um, Man, it's just and, and everything's walking distance. So if you you Uber from the airport, you probably won't have to Uber again because you literally can walk to everything in that area. So I love it. I love the area. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to like super outside chance to do it, but I'm like, if we get a nanny in there, but I, I don't know. If she's <laughs> you can afford that. it, man. Get a nanny. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I like I said, uh, I think it's it's. Um, top show in in the world because i mean we don't really go to the shows overseas or in different countries which i'm i'm planning to do like in 2025 i want to be able to travel because i think they're going to do a show in korea or another show in china um and i would love to be able to do that but um here when is it when when is the time that you are setting it setting your second show to go up i believe it's the third week of september and then nice. next year, we're going to be a little bit more aggressive. We're going to try to bounce off of Dallas a little bit. So we're going to try to do every other month that Dallas is not doing a show. I think uh, that's four, uh, four shows a year. Uh, we're leaning towards like January next year, March the following year, uh, probably a summertime show, which we've never even had, which is like a June show. Uh, yeah. And then we'll do September as what is the, are those pretty much the tentative dates that we're probably going to be doing or the months at least uh trying to be aggressive uh to try to like at the end of the day like uh, the southeast market doesn't have anything like what we're doing on a consistent level and i think for a coach collision to get to the point to where where we want to be at we we feel like we got to be a little bit more consistent plus you know being consistent allows us to be able to grow too so i mean you know we just hired uh daria which is our event coordinator for this show and she's been a big help and then we're just wanting to expand and grow and bring in good people who can help us get better so I do think you y'all did it right. Um, just to expand on like how many employees that you put in there. Yeah. You know, a lot of shows sometimes they might not have the manpower for it, so it doesn't go. And you know what I'm talking about. And I'm not I'm not throwing any show under the bus. I'm just saying in general, if you don't have the manpower to run a show like that, you know you can run into trouble. Yeah. Quick. Yeah. So I I we appreciated it a hundred percent that like. We really didn't have any, there was no type of like, oh, where's this? Where's this? Where's my cases? Where's my table? Or like, what What do I do for this or this? Like, it was all, you can turn and there was somebody being able to help me. So uh, that was awesome, I think. Yeah, well, we're, we're planning on, and I think that's why we took a little time to really decide to do more shows, because I think that we really wanted to have, you know, think everything through, like, unfortunately like a lot of these other shows that are more consistent right if you know if you're if you're dallas and you can do a show every two months right if you make a mistake you got two more two, hey look we'll do it the next time okay cool for us it's like you know you can have an idea and then a year passes like you forgot about what you're about to do yep yeah or it's it, out of mind. exactly so i think that us doing it a little bit more consistent will allow us to grow faster allow uh people to to because there's tons of people who've never been to coach collision before which is which is the crazy thing about the success of the show is like 
you know, I just think about all the people at Dallas, right? Right? Because Dallas is a Midwest is a Midwest show. Uh, there are about seven hundred tables at that show, and I could pretty much say that probably about maybe less than thirty percent of the people that set up at that show have been to Coach Collision, just as a vendor. Is it and, is it harder for you to get the West Coast people though? Because we're like right in the middle, right? Yeah, the East Coast we're in the middle, West Coast we're in the middle. Mm-hmm. I see sometimes that it's hard to get one coast to come to the other if it's not somebody that is like super into the industry like you or I. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I think that's one of the things that I always think about because I want my reach. Like, I think that's why I wanted to do one show a year is because I I looked at us as like, we want to compete with the nationals. Like we want to be on a national level. So I was like, okay, well let's just do one show a year, make the demand. So how will people will be like, yeah, I want to be at that show and I'm not missing it. Cause I heard the last time was really good. And then I started thinking to myself like, man, we're just not there yet. Cause the nationals have been a 40, 50 year, you know, marathon. Right. right. And we're only three, four years in. And I mean, I'm just thinking about the fact that we're just not there yet. And I think in order for us to do what we need to do, which is bring in new collectors, I think we need to be a little bit more consistent. And, um, but to answer your question, like, I think that, um, for us to reach getting West coast people is definitely really hard for us to do. Uh, we do get, man, maybe 5% of people that co- go to a Dow, a, a Burbank show to come set right. up. I mean, we get the Coleman's, right? Sometimes we get the Sasha T. Smith, you know, the Sasha's, but those guys, they do this stuff on a high level, right? Um, and I guess anybody that's doing it, the things on a high level, we'll, we'll expect to have them. But, you know, surprisingly, we haven't even got the East Coast to really come and support us as much. I mean, people that set up at White Plains, probably, probably the same percentage that set up at Dallas is probably what we have at White Plains. We only get typically, yeah, we don't even have that. And so, I think that that's the amazing thing about the Coach Collision show is we still have not even gotten the East Coast to really buy into what we're doing. People hear about it. They know it's a great show. And, you know, but but we haven't gotten those people to really buy into what we're doing. But that's the amazing part about what we're doing is once we get everybody to be aligned and be like, oh, yeah, this is consistently a good show. I like what he's doing. Uh, we're going to continue to bring in the different flavors. And in my mind, I'm thinking if I can get 600 card vendors, 200 sneaker vendors, a hundred comic book vendors. We could be a super mega show and be one of those things that where our demand is so high, we can travel around the country and show people something different that they've never seen before. But that's, you know, that's like the final, to me, that's like the final goal for culture collision in my mind. It's like, how can I, cause, cause I feel like for a long time, I feel like the nationals was, hasn't really been marketed correctly. They haven't really done the things that I feel like they can do for our space. And so I feel like with the right budget, the right, let's say the right amount of money being backed by culture collision, I could see us being like a mega show in a really quick amount of time. And I think you'll probably see that in the next two years. Actually, I ain't going to say next year. My boy always says, my wife always says, be more optimistic. I'll just say within the next six months to a year, we'll say that. There we go. You know, earlier you touched on that. You guys both like mainly collect basketball, but I know Joseph that you have a, really cool collection with rappers and mainly Jay-Z. Can you like speak yeah. on how you got into that and like how you, like what made you go after those cards? Cause they're freaking awesome. Well, I, I will say this. The one thing that I ain't gonna say I'm good at it. Sometimes I get lucky. I think a lot of us as collectors get lucky. Uh, they always say when everybody's going left, you go right. And, um, and so, you know, I start dibbling dabbling and, and different things, you know, you go to a card show you open up a box of uh, Star Wars or WWE back when they were like 50 bucks. Now they're like three, $400 now because the market has changed since then. Right. Yeah. But I mean, sometimes you, as a collector, you have to have a foresight. And I think the most important thing that I really gravitated towards when I started buying rappers and pop, pop culture stuff is buying what you like, you know, buy what you like, be happy with it. Um, and by doing that, you know, if you believe so strongly, I think that's how sports cards even really got to where it's at. You know, somebody had to buy the first Mickey Mantle PSA 10. and was like, you know what? I'm going to pay $50,000 for this card. It's going to be worth $40 million one day. You know, <laughs> I'm just saying and like somebody has had a four. Yeah. And so uh, for myself, I mean, I always like I always been into hip hop music. I always. Been, and honestly, I really didn't even know that Jay-Z even really had cards for real until probably like the last four or five years. I feel like I've seen pictures here and there, but you know, like, you know, you see stuff every now and then you're like, all right, well, whatever. And then you start kind of looking into it. He's like, Oh, this is cool. Jay-Z actually has a real rookie card. Yeah. And so like, I started getting into that. 
Uh, two years, two years ago, I was buying heavy Jay Z, man. But I got to the point where I was, I, I was well over a hundred grand in Jay Z, and I was just like, yeah, I, I, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> it got too expensive. I started pricing myself out. But I will say that I, I do plan on finishing my Topps Chrome set. I am missing four cards from the Master set. Three of them being Super Fractors. I got one out of the four. Uh, I know where one out of one of the Super Fractors are, and I, mean, I know where two, half the cards that I need are. But those guys, when you're dealing with high-end Jay-Z stuff, I can tell you right now, it is very hard to get those rare cards out of uh, super collectors of Jay-Z. I promise you that. Uh, yeah. I've ran across a couple couple of them. And, um, I mean, like, they don't care about comps. They're like, I'd rather keep the card. Like, I've, I've, I've tried to overpay on certain cards that I need for this set. And it's, just, it's, it's, a, it's a thing I got to be patient on. I feel like you got to – I mean, honestly, when it gets to that, when you hit that, like, six like coming up to the six figure or passing the six figure amount it like you i mean you and i are probably the same way though we're like i mean do you want to sell it i mean then like give me something that will make me not think about like regretting like having seller's remorse or right whatever the case may be um and i i, I agree like when you're dealing with that especially if they know that you need it too um and try to take advantage they have, they have leverage for sure bro over you. I, I so I bought so I bought the Jay Z the last big Jay Z card that I bought. Oh, well, I just bought something really beat recently, kind of big. Uh, I bought the pro, the the Type One Jay Z Tops Finest picture. So I own a Tops Finest Super Fractor Jay Z one on one. Capo two thousand five. He's a big collector of two thousand five. I'm sorry, two thousand five Tops Finest Super Fractors. He's a big collector of that. He actually bought back in the day Tops Vault. Was selling the proto the, the type ones of all the pictures of the of the, the the pictures that they use for the cards, and so he sold me the Jay Z. Once he knew I had the Super Factor One One Jay Z, he sold me the Type One picture. I'm probably gonna display it at Culture Collision, uh, which I thought was a really cool piece to go with the, the Super Factor. But um, like as I got to the point to where like I just got too much money in the sports car. I mean, I'm sorry, in the uh, Jay Z stuff, I had to kind of fall back a little bit. But it's really hard though when people know you need things, man, and I, I you end up overpaying on certain things you ne don't necessarily need. But like that type one photo, I paid three thousand dollars for it. But well, it's, 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 still it's cool. the only one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the and only. You can, it's, you can display it. it goes with your collection. So like exactly. I don't know what the how much that that's worth, but like I feel like that's not a bad deal to put next to your and it's the it's the pro it's the uh, type one. So you can sit it right next to your collection. Um, but that's awesome. I always, whenever I sold on whatnot, I sold a Jay Z, uh, ref just a, like a refractor. Does he have autos too? Yes. Maybe it was, a, I think it was just a refractor PSA 10, uh, rookie. And I was like, I wonder how this was going to go. And it went way better than I thought. Like, mm. it, like people, I just don't think that that gets put into the sport. What could, was that in actually finest basketball? Yes. The product is actually I love in basketball. When they do stuff like that. I love when they do stuff like that. And they Man. put those type of like, like, I love the whole, even though it's sports, I love the Brady and baseball. I love like when they do one offs like that, um, everybody starts chasing them. But that card, it, it did very well in, in the stream. And so That's there's good. a lot of other people that probably didn't even know they're like rookie, Jay Z, Tops Chrome. Let me go look this up and then. It ended up doing really well, so I think that's super cool that you have all that stuff. Well, I'm I'm prepared. I'm prepared. I'm prepared for uh, Jay Z to do his picture like LeBron did with Fanatics, because you know he's a he's a he's a part of that whole deal, you know. And yeah. so I think when people start realizing, like, what, like once these entertainers and uh, once these entertainers really know more about our space, you mm -hmm. know, I I think they'll be more. I, I think you'll see more come out. Um, like I had conversations when I went to White Plain, I ran across um Jada Kiss and I was talking to him about the car. He was like, Really? He was like, Yeah, he was like, Man, he loved to do that with his son. He was talking about doing it with his son. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I think it's just we don't see like, you know, being African American, right? I li I've lived in the hood before. Mm -hmm. I've you know, I've lived in bad areas before. And I think that the thing is the truth of the matter is you don't see collectibles in those spaces. And right. And so a lot of people are not grown up in that culture. And so when you kind of like say, hey, man, like there's something different out here that you can potentially be in, right? I know you do sneakers full time. Check this out. 
did you know this? Did you know that? Did you know that this card sold for this? And it's like, what? I didn't know that. And it's eye openings for the, a lot of these guys. So when these sneaker collectors, when they come to our show and they see somebody cash out for a card for $50,000, what did they just sell for $50,000? And saw somebody go crazy over this. What was that? And you don't see that in a sneaker culture like that. It, it happens more in our culture than it does in their culture. So it's just the, Bro, it's, it's a it's a lot to be said there. But I think that if we embrace these guys in the sneaker culture and we educate a few of these guys, I think they could become collectors. And I think that they'll learn to be more collectors of sneakers and being able to appreciate them. Because, bro, because, like, you know how it is. I mean, a pair of sneakers is three. Like, if you buy – like, I pay resale on most of this stuff now because I don't feel like camping in line anymore. But I'd rather pay 400 bucks for my livelihood and not having to fight somebody for a pair of sneakers for size 12s. I'm like – just for the yep. convenience. <laughs> I'm a size 12 shoe. Yeah, I'm a size 12 shoe. <laughs> yeah. So 12 we fight for the a... same shoe. Yeah, we are. We are. I think, um, I believe, like, Meek Mill came up to our table at Nationals. Mm -hmm. um, nice. We got to meet Slim Thug in Houston, and he loved Dope. it. He was all like, how much are these worth? And uh, both very seemed like they were interested in cards. Yeah. So I think there are more and more people coming through uh, in the hip-hop industry. Um to, to like card shows and, and checking them out because they like sports. They probably like collected when they were little, maybe here or there, or saw them, at least knew what baseball, basketball, yeah. football cards were. So I think that's awesome that that uh, that you got to meet Jadakiss. I, I love Jadakiss too. So good, dude. Um, Yosef, what do you I think? Want, about, go, ahead. go ahead. No, I just want to touch on everybody listening. Yosef dropped some great advice. So I hope you paid attention when he said when everyone's going left you go right and you have to have foresight in this in this industry that is like top tier advice and like really listen to what he's saying and take that to heart because he's a hundred percent correct when he says that yeah no i appreciate it like i mean it's just the truth i mean it's, it's like bro i i, I want to say the minute i started posting star wars cards super fractors because you know i went on a like little six seven month run on that and then all of a sudden, Darth Vader does forty thousand dollars, and everybody's like, well, "What's that car that you bought worth?" And I end up selling it for like twenty five grand. You had the like, one with all of them on it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, but people thought I was crazy when I paid fifteen for it. There's more people that like Star Wars than that probably like football. Man, there's a, there's nerds the biggest... everywhere for everything. Bro, they have a Star Wars convention, and I'm pretty sure that convention is probably bigger than the National. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I bet. And they I all bet. dress up with their lightsabers and everything, bro. They are yeah, into yeah. that. Man. I mean, they, like like TCG people go hard. They go yeah. like when they come to shows. I mean, they're in character. I love to see it because of the passion. I think I think that's great passion. Like we have passion for our for our stuff. I mean, they yep. have passion for theirs. And that they're just showing it on the outside. So, um, but I, I did want to ask you with the industry and everything going on, fanatics, Panini, um, all the grading, everything, what, like, how do you feel about where we are now? And then what do you think about like the future of, of this industry? Man, to sum up that, I'm going to say a obvious term, a term that most people hear but I'm going to say it's so vague and I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to explain it to you. It's going to sound genius by the dip, by the dip, whatever goes up can go, you know, it, it does go down, but it can go right back up again. And yep. maybe it doesn't get back to the numbers that maybe we saw in the past. But I think that if you had in a financial good, 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 in a financial good space, I think you buy the cars that you'll probably never see again because you might not see it again at that price again. Because the people that made millions of dollars, if they smart, if they if they're smart, if they made millions of dollars in this space, they're smart. They're reinvesting in it. They're turning around and buying it. The one thing uh, I don't know if you guys follow Sean. I'm pretty sure you guys probably follow Sean. Mm. Every time he buy, bro, be every every. I feel like every week he's posting a crazy exquisite card. He just probably got him locked up somewhere and pulls them out once once <laughs> once a week. You and know what I'm saying? Oh, 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 like, when he picked them up, it, it, his collection is ridiculous. So, I mean, there's a bunch of people out there with nasty stuff, but Shine's definitely one of the top. I agree. But I would say so. I, I say that to the collectors that are out there, like, you know, um, Nick, uh, man, I know, I'm not going to use him as, I'm not going to put him on blast. I'm, I'm just going to say there's collectors out there that did, that did not sell when it was peak, right? But 
they could still sell now and probably still make a profit. But if they would have sold at peak, right, they could have turned around and bought back the cars that they loved or bought a better graded car th that they loved and then still be able to keep and recoup that money. Um, I think it's important for us to reinvest into our space. I think I that I think that that's the problem, in my opinion, is people, you know, it's and I'm, I'm not really trying to throw nobody under the bus, but I'm just going to use Roth cars as an example. Right. Uh, pretty known in the space. He makes a lot of money. He does really well with the buy sell trade. I think I, I've had conversations with him before. I was like, hey, man, you know, you make ten thousand dollars on the play and buy a nice thousand dollar car. Put it to the side. Take it out of population. Something that's really nice, right? Maybe you love it for X amount of reasons, right? Take it out, put it, in, put it into your personal collection. Keep it, right? You'll make up that money. It's not a big deal. But we need, we need, we need investors or flippers or whatever you want to call them to turn into collectors at some point in time. If you made a million dollars in our space, you could put a hundred thousand dollars for the card to the side. It's not that big of a deal. And be reinvest into the space. Take a card out of, out of circulation. Um, then the other aspect of it is from a business level, we need these companies to reinvest. Agreed. We need PSA to re like, we need PSA to reinvest. We need Beckett to reinvest. We need all these companies to buy into like, they want us to buy their product, but they don't want to put the money out there to reinvest into what we have going on. And that's, you know, that's the buy-in for, from the business level, right? It's, Cultural vision may not make millions of dollars right now for a show, right? But the one thing you'll always see me do is you'll always see me forward thinking. Always see me trying trying something different. Maybe it doesn't make a million dollars. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe maybe I lose some money, whatever, right? But I've learned that aspect of it from the collectible space. We all have to gamble a little bit when we buy a card. But um, I use all those things as an example really for like buying the dip. While the market is down, double down. To these companies out there, if the if the market's down, market more. Try some different stuff. Bring in somebody else that maybe can give you some fresh ideas, right? Join jo join Culture Collision and, and try to see, you know what? Let's focus on creating new collectors. Let me follow his lead. Let me see what I can do to help him, right? And, it, and I'm not trying to be biased, but a little bit I am. <laughs> um, but, but I think that the point is, is join some mission to try to sit here and focus where it's going to gravitate towards educating people. And, uh, you know, and I, I know you can't say much, but I'll say this. I feel like the education portion of this hobby is missing as well, right? It's not a lot of experts. Everybody's an expert, but the experts aren't really speaking up. That's why I'm actually glad that I'm glad that you chose to start doing podcast war, Sappy, because I feel like you are a voice that's missing from this space. You too, Jordan. I give you your credit too. Um, but the point of what I'm saying is you guys are experts, experts in your fields, and that's why I started trying to I started kind of talking a little bit more because I was privy to being able to come to the sit at the table with Sappy and Terry and Jerry. Uh, I'm sorry, Jeremy and Stern. Right. And the Terrences and the Tonys and everybody else that, that have years and generations of, of, of knowledge. So, like, I feel like that education and those conversations are missing, man. And like we, we we're really we're really allowing the younger people and it's nothing wrong with the younger people speaking their mind and speaking their truth and buying and flipping and stuff like that. But the other aspect of it is, is we need more collectors and we need knowledge and we need these companies to buy the dip and we need everybody to buy the dip on what's going on and reinvest. Uh, my question to you, my question to you, I'm going to flip it real quick. Are, are you seeing, is there a, a decrease or increasing in the grading market? I would say, Oh, from 2020, yeah to now oh definitely decrease okay it definitely decrease just because the influx of 20 i i don't know if that's a fair because that was like the industry was trending up in 2019 right and then it hit steroids in 2020 and 21 um and so uh it's definitely down a little bit for actually numbers wise It's it, actually it's closer than, than I, I'm saying it is because I'm thinking of dollar wise because mm -hmm. uh, there was more to be made in 2020 and 2021. But if I pull up numbers of how many cards we were grading compared to then, mm -hmm. it's it's very similar actually still. 
So okay. I think that a lot of the people that got washed out that they, that they can make money super easy and not have to put more work into it um, than they wanted to or whatever the case may be. Um, or people that just came in that didn't have like a ton of money to spend or or whatever the case may be. And, and kind of a lot of those people have washed out. But I would say the numbers are, are very similar to when we were doing them uh, back then. That's good. But the dollars is different. The dollar amount's different. A lot more people are using that cheaper service. Mm. I figure I, I did figure that that I did figure that I was I was going to ask you that but I didn't want to be too direct about it cuz I felt no, like No, no, it's fine. Like yeah. I, I, we we're, we're cool we, we, you know that we're whatever the customer wants, we want to help them with. They want to go with SGC, they want to go with Beckett, they want to go with PSA, we'll give our opinion to them. Um but we we're getting new uh, customers and every every week we get new customers, but the uh, most the most new customers or the most part that it's not online is what I'm trying to say is people are dropping off more uh, new customers are dropping off at our shops than good. sending send, like knowing us from online. We still get a lot through the mail, but I'm I'm surprised of how much like local just to just to put what you're saying about educating people. It's probably because they come to our shop and we tell them how it works. And oh, should I buy this eight hundred dollar prison box? But what's your goal? Do you want to do this, this, or this? So when we educate them, they they trust us more. And so in that trusting, they grade with us. And then mm -hmm. they grade with us. They get a good grade on some stuff. Uh, and then they flip it and they say, okay, well I get it now. And I mm -hmm. think that's what you were talking about when you can't, you know just how I learned like 12, 15 years ago, how you learned in 2017. Uh, I think, and what your show does is we need to make this space welcoming for everybody Yeah, uh, to come in here. And I agree with you about buying on the dip and it almost sounds too easy, right? Like buy the dip and people are like, you would think more people would listen to that advice, but for whatever reason people buy. And, and it's good for the hobby too, when they buy on the hype, because that's how a lot of people make money, but of course, like baseball right now is low. John Morant's gonna come down some. I will buy Jaw right now. Mm -hmm. I would if I was a company, I'd be like, okay, the, right now the industry is a little bit low right now. I'm gonna get the most I can and get as many people to Culture Collision. So let me sponsor Culture Collision, being there, supporting this this show that's gonna grow. And he has, you know, is planning on taking his show outside if he can do all this you know the comics the sneakers and bring in all kinds of i mean imagine how big that show would be yeah so yeah. i agree with you 100 percent on that and uh as far as grading um it's a it, it it didn't it hasn't gone up but it hasn't gone down too much either mm. yeah yeah it's, it's, education it's, i agree like i think there's certain questions that like not like for lack of a better term, the average consumer or customer in this industry has that we probably like the three of us, just cause we've been in it for 10 plus years. Think of it as common sense that to some people it's like, it's not. And it's like, they have mm -hmm. these questions and maybe hopefully they're not scared to ask. Hopefully all, I mean, I know we're all approachable so they can ask us pretty much anything, anytime at any show. So I definitely agree with that. No that education needs to be spread more. I feel like there's never a dumb question, right? Correct. Like I'm, I'm the type though. I'm very, I'm a lot more laid back than just like you, but there are some people that are, you know, their time, all of our time is worth money. Right. But you can ask me, even if I don't have the time, I'll try and answer it for you or I'll get it when I do have time. I'll answer your question. And so, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I can't wait to see what this year brings for y'all for the, I, I think 24 is going to be a good year though. It's also an election year, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's good, right? For the, I, I see Bitcoin went up again just now. Um, mm -hmm. Some stuff is starting to trend up. You just got to make the right plays. Like people, a couple of people are hitting me up on Kenny Pickett. Even now they just made Mason Rudolph the starter as of now. But like, I was like, why are people hitting me up on Kenny Pickett? I'm like, okay, so these, the people that are hitting me up are like people that I'm like, okay, should I be buying Kenny Pickett then and keeping them? So I'm just putting them away, holding them for a year. But there's all there's also so many cards you can put away, right? Like, mm -hmm. am I going to put all my Trevor Lawrence's away? No, I'm not. I'm not going to put all my Trevor Lawrence's away. He played her. Um, and then I think that should be educated to, to the public, too. Because most card collectors are probably like, oh, Tra Travis or Trevor Lawrence just went in there and lost. 
he did lose. He made some bad throws, but he was also like probably 75%, right? At best. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. trying to get to the playoffs. Um, I, just like you, I do buy the dip. And I, I invest into the dip. And I agree with you. I wish more companies um, put back into into our industry and supported because I think it's, it's going to be – 2025 is going to be crazy. There's going to be a lot of yep. changes. We don't know really what's going to happen with everything. Um, and But for me, the way I look at anything, I was reading my devotional today, and it was about how uh, there's mountains that are put up in our face, right? And, uh, and I'm not trying to push my religion on anybody, but God helps me by flattening them, or he helps me climb them hmm. and get over the top of them. And that's just how I look at life. I see this mountain. I'm like, how am I going to flatten this? Yeah. Or how am I going to climb over it and survive in the now, right? Like like you said, buying the dip. Right now, there's a little bit of a dip. Um, basketball is about to pop off, though. I'm telling you, like, basketball, you, you know the different times of years, what to buy and everything else. But um, it, it's it's so easy. I just I don't understand why more people don't do it. Mm. I mean, about a month from now, time to start buying quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, over. Like, it doesn't I, matter. I don't Burrow, Herbert, Herbert, any of them. Like Joe I bought a, Burrow, I bought a uh, kitty. I bought a kitty picket. So shoot, bro! I brought a Trey Lance. Don't even, don't even, don't get me started. Oh, you're, don't, not don't start, you're not starting. You're not starting on the Cowboys. Trey we can Lance, start on another team. Trey you're not starting on the Cowboys. <laughs> Dak's taking us to the I'm promised hoping, land. I'm hoping like Dak is like. Well, actually, he's he's third string right now, but. And in an emergency, right? Dax, Dax winning Super Bowl well, MVP, so it doesn't matter well, what Trey Lance doing. I do, I do hope, I do hope that uh, here's the thing. I look at Trey, right? At some point in time, he was go- he's going to get a chance. He is, and if and if, if he's doing his job and he's learning from everybody and they taking their time with him, I think that's probably the best scenario he could probably be in instead of oh, being yeah. thrown and, to the wall. And a cowboy, so yep, absolutely. I mean, and I mean, Dax's not going to be there forever. Him. I mean, you know how Dak is. He, I don't want to put no no juju on you guys, but you know he'll. Yeah, yeah. none of this negative, none of this negative, none of this negativity, man. If Dak gets hurt, Joe, I'm blaming him. I'm blaming you if Dak gets hurt. <laughs> no, but um, what what you said earlier about like me helping the Dallas Card Show that like hearing that humbles me because of um we've both grown in this industry together, um, and um. The way that Kyle, I believe, has trusted the, the the people around him to be able to help build that and grow it, uh, I think he's done a great job. Along with like Lawrence, you know, I work with Lawrence, and he's yep. over there with me. And then we bring people like you have a huge presence there. Like I hear your name dropped all the time. Jeremy's right there. We, you know, Terry used to be uh, sitting next to me, and then even everybody behind us. Like I'm I'm looking, and I'm like, there's all corporates here. Um, I think golden sets up there. So, I mean, just, just the way that you guys have been able to grow your shows is amazing. And I think that you already know the right people to put in place. So I'm really excited to see what the future holds for prism God and, uh, culture collision and, and, and everything that you guys do. Thank you. And one day I expect to see both of you on the court, just so you know. One day, you're, uh, gonna, you're both going to be out there playing. Well, you know, by the time, you know, the charity basketball game, right, gets to the level that it needs to be at, right, once I got tops to I'm, – I'm giving some some, some uh, tips. Tops, I want you guys to make cards for the charity basketball game so you can see them in packs. That would be really Let's cool to add to, add that to the sick. show. That would right? be cool. And then, you know, these are some of the ideas that I plan on rolling out eventually once we kind of make – you know, once I get the right – relationship so to speak right and then also getting adidas or pumas to give give my guys free sneakers right and then you know we already got the jersey so this is one of those things we we just trying to, cr- trying to create a cool experience Definitely. where people be like i want people to feel honored being a part of the charity basketball game and i think a lot of people do already feel that way now but i think that that's something that we're going to do once a year it'll be at the january show it'll be a cool lot and we're going to stream the game too so it's going to be a really cool uh cool event that People are going to be proud to be a part of. Plus, we're raising, most importantly, we're raising money for those charities, Team Easton and the Mr. Strong Foundation. Uh, the link's on my page. Make sure you guys uh, check that out and donate some money to those charities because it's very important that while we're making money in this space that, you know, we give back to these uh, less fortunate or the people, you know, other people. We have a responsibility. So 
that's all those links on on this video Thank too you. Where, yeah we gotta where go can people me. watch the game you said you're streaming where can they watch it um as of right now youtube uh as of right now youtube so i'll have more information out we're rolling out some man i, I wish i could tell you the whole story but i can't really tell you the whole story but i'll just sit here and say right now it's uh the youtube uh we'll be streaming the game at for sure um it may be some other places i'll find out more soon Make sure to get us that link too, so that everybody can watch it. Y'all are gonna have yeah. a lot of people watching that game. Yeah, we wanna uh, we wanna have it to where people are going to. Well, it'll be streaming live at Jeff's shop, and then hopefully we can get every every maybe we can get every shop in the country to stream it. <laughs> That'd be dope. That'd be cool. That'd be dope. Yeah. Well, did you have any other questions for him? Uh, I think that's it. I appreciate you coming on. Always great to Thank talk you. to you, and I guess we'll see you next weekend at the Dallas show. Yes, I will be there. Basically, the uh, the dates for Coach Collision, if you don't know, is January 26th to the 28th, 2024. The second show will be in September. It's like the second or third week of September. Uh, we'll announce those dates as we get closer to this coming up show. Uh, cool thing is the people who are currently vendors now will have access to keep their same tables for this second show in September. Um, and after that, we're going to open it up to the public a week after Coach Collision. So if you missed out on the show, if you're on the wait list because we're sold out, um, make sure you jump the gun and get your tables because you don't want to miss this next show. We're going to plan on continually trying to push the envelope and make it a cooler show. Also, every podcast I have to mention my wife, Miss Prism Goddess Joyce, because she gets mad when I don't do it. So I'm going to make sure that everybody knows that she helped me with Culture Collision and she's also my uh, partner for the show as an as oh, and yeah. also a partner. That's in life. your backbone. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, of course. Hundred percent. All right. Well, so, we appreciate you coming on, man. It's always a pleasure. We're, we'll have you on again in the future, thank uh, you. maybe in between the two shows, just to kind of so you can talk talk about how it went and everything like that. Of course. Um, show some clips from the game. Uh, we can talk about maybe there might be beef again, and uh, I'll think we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe so new beef. So but I will much. say this also. Uh, I want to thank God too, man. Like you know, um, I always you know. People don't really realize that, I mean, I'd be big in a religion, but at the same time, I'm not ignorant to what God has done for me and my family. So I'm pretty blessed and I appreciate that and uh, appreciate having people like you guys too as resources. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on, man. We appreciate you, man. Of course.